and I am the scrappy wife behind scrappywife.com and today I have a process video for you. I am working in the devotional A Heart at Rest from By the Well for God. I will link the unboxing below as well as all the links for all the goodies for A Heart at Rest and I am just jumping into this kit and the first thing I like to do is set up my journal. If you follow me, you know that normally I do a traveler's notebook setup just like this and I have travelers, blank traveler's notebooks that come as an accessory to the kit that you can get and all of the goodies and I work in a traveler's notebook system. This month I wanted to change it up just a little bit. So I am going to take my devotional A Heart at Rest and I'm going to deconstruct it and make it into a disc bound devotional. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to cut it apart. I'm a little bit nervous, so hopefully it all goes well. And I already have some pages that I want to put in and I'll explain what these are. And then I have another idea for another set of pages that I want to add in just to kind of change it up, look at this a little bit differently this month and kind of challenge myself in a different way. I will put you all on fast forward. Wish me the best of luck. I am super nervous about cutting into my wonderful devotional, but I think it's going to work out in the end. Um, and we'll see how all of this turns out. Let's go. Okay, the first step to rearranging this devotional is to take it apart. So I'm using some tiny scissors and pulling out the staples in the devotional and I will pull out my paper cutter. I will link it below. I always have people that ask. It's a Fiskars paper cutter. I love it. I like that it gets smaller when I put it away. So it works really well for me. And I am simply just cutting the devotional in half. I'm being really careful as I cut it in half, making sure I'm right in the middle, right where the fold already was. And then you can see me here. I'm going to go through and check and make sure I have all the pages in the right order before I start hole punching them. I am using the Create 365 hole punch, and this is of course designed for happy planners. And before I started punching, I tested it out on some scrap paper that I cut to about the same size because I wanted to see where I should line up the paper, how I wanted the holes to land so that I wouldn't end up with like a half hole at the end. So really make sure you check that out before you start hole punching. For me, it was lined up with the very top line on my 365, which I believe is intended for the larger happy planners, but just something to watch out for as you're getting ready to punch. Also, something else I learned when punching, it really worked better when I just did one page at a time. It is not designed to punch out several thick papers at a time, so that's something you're going to want to watch out for as you're punching. So this hole punch is designed specifically for these discs, and they all go with the Create 365 system, the happy planner system. And you can see here, I'm just assembling. I end up with one extra disc, which I'm gonna just add to my stash to use perhaps in a later project. And I'm making sure again that I get my devotional put in in the right order. But the great thing about these discs is that you can take it apart and put it back together. So if for some reason I had something in out of order, I could just take that page out and put it back in. As opposed to if you were to spiral bind, then that would be more permanent. When I got my devotional, I did look through and kind of read through it very quickly. And I picked one word for each day that I want to kind of meditate on and think on. And so I use those words as these pages that I can write notes and prayers on. And the longest part of this project was creating these um, insert pages using my silhouette. All I did was cut out um, the layered words on my silhouette and glued them to some scrapbook paper that I already had in my stash. I didn't go buy anything new. This is just things I had. And that probably took the longest. The actual assembling of this book was really, really quick. So if you don't do all the detail work of the silhouette, then putting it in a disc bound system so that you can add your own inserts is a really quick and easy thing to do. Recently, I've found myself not using watercolor as much on my entries, and I decided since this month's focus is rest, 
then I would kind of bring back watercolor and put an emphasis on it because for me, it's one of the most relaxing things to do. I don't really count myself as a watercolor artist, but I do like to use my watercolors a lot and I've just gotten away from it. So what I decided to do was take some watercolor paper and I'm trimming it down to four and a quarter by eight and a quarter. And I'm going to insert it in to my journal. The fun thing about this is that I will be able to remove those pages while I'm watercoloring on them and then insert them back in when they are dry. I don't often use watercolor paper because I'm usually working in my Bible journal. So I'm excited to kind of try something new and get to use this medium, which I don't normally get to do. This is the stack of remnants from my silhouette and I am using them to create tabs. I actually don't have a tab punch. It's one of the few supplies that I don't have on hand. And so I'm using a tab provided in the um, by the Well for God kit and I'm tracing it onto the paper and then I will trim it out. And I will do that for all of the colors that are left over. And that way I know that the scrapped colors I use go with what's already in the journal, if that makes sense. It'll kind of coordinate with the words that are already in there. So I go through my whole pile and you'll see me start to go super fast as I put you on time lapse in just a second, but I will just trace them all, cut them all out, and then arrange them to match and coordinate with the words that are in the kit. Also decide to use my trusty tile alphas and I'm going to label each tabby with the day and the number that way as I'm looking at my journal I'll know where to flip through what day I'm on and it just keeps it even more organized while I'm working I will tell you the truth normally I would just eyeball how I put my tabs in but I decided I would try to show you guys kind of a strategy I knew I wanted two rows of tabs each with seven in it and so what I did was put on day one and day seven, each at the edge of their respective pages, then took day four, put it right in the middle. And then I'm using just my eyes to space out the rest of the tabs in between. You certainly could measure and do the math to figure it out. But I think one of the charming parts of having something that's handmade and put together is that it's not perfect. It doesn't have to be spaced perfectly. This just helped me kind of get it in order and make sure that it wasn't too wonky once they were all in. Then once I'm doing the second row, I just visually line them up with the tab that is in front of them, like the corresponding tab. So day eight is lined up with day one, day nine is lined up with day two, and so on and so on. This actually assembled pretty quickly and I'm really excited about this journal. I do like changing it up from month to month. It helps keep it fresh for me and sparks creativity. So I plan to work exclusively in this devotional journal for a heart at rest. Here is a look at my completed journal. I am super excited with how well it turned out and I'm so looking forward to diving in. So as you can see, all cut apart each page inserted on the backs of the words that I plan to kind of meditate on. I can take notes, answer the questions, and then I included a page of watercolor paper in each section so that I can work with the watercolors more, kind of challenge myself. And I'm super pleased with the tabs coming off. Love using my tile alphas. And I am just loving, loving, loving how it turned out. I hope you liked it too. I hope it inspired you to maybe change it up this month. Try something different with your devotional creatively, just so it will help spark something different as you study. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider hitting that subscribe button as well as that bell notification button. So you'll be the first to know when I release a new video. I hope you have a fantastic day and as always, keep it creative.